She had avoided the bedroom altogether, but she knew she had to deal with it now. He was gone. She had to accept that. Opening the bedroom door, she discovered she was right. The closet door was wide open, and Katsu's olive green golf bag was prostrate on the floor, its clubs splayed out and pointing accusations at her. A battered golf ball had rolled most of the way across the hardwood and stopped just where she now stood. Stealing herself to the task in front of her, she picked up the golf ball and took one stiff step toward the closet. She stopped abruptly. Someone was in there. A large figure was hunched over in the closet. The shock of it made her breath catch. Someone had broken in. But worse than that, this intruder appeared to be in full samurai armor. It was like a figure from her dream had come to life. He barely fit inside the closet. Hanging clothes were draped against the complex pieces of the yoroi carapace. A sheathed katana protruded from his left hip like a huge black tongue. His menacing kabuto helmet, a leering many-toothed dragon face, adorned its front with ears like reptilian wings and twisting horns spiking upward, had been removed and placed next to the golf bag. His focus was intent on the contents of a shoebox. He sifted through the playing cards within, admiring each pack. Fear froze Sayaka for a moment, but she quickly felt violated and angry. Her boyfriend was dead, and now someone was looting through his cards. She no longer cared that this intruder was in armor. The freak must have climbed through the window. She noticed it was wide open. Without thinking, she shouted at the armored stranger and hurled the golf ball at him. Stop it! Leave those alone! They're not yours. The samurai in the closet lurched upward, banging his head on the shelf above him, and turned to face Sayaka, a gruesome scowl of hatred embossed on his face. It was otherworldly, too pronounced to be real. It was a face of pure fury glaring at her. A pack of cards fell from his large, gauntleted hands. The face was gray and bloodless. The teeth that showed through its scowl were an awful yellow, with thick grime in the gaps. The eyes were wet, almost teary, but the pupils were a dead and lifeless black. No human soul resided there. The black hair was matted and unkempt. So often had she told Katsu to brush his hair. It had always looked a wreck but he had never cared. Katsu? The cheeks were hanging. The skin looked like burlap. The eyes were empty. But it was Katsu's face. It was unmistakably his face, twisted into that angry, unfamiliar grimace. But it was most definitely not his body. The body that wore her lover's head was much larger than Katsu's. He had always been on the scrawny side, and besides, his body had been cremated three weeks ago. Sayaka stood, unable to move. Her love had come back to her, but this reincarnation of him was unforgivably wrong. Her guts begged to cry out, but nothing came. Her lips did not even move, save a tiny, almost imperceptible quiver. Then... In one swift and graceful movement, the katana's blade flashed from its scabbard and severed the air on either side of Sayaka's neck. In the same movement, the samurai with Katsu's face shook the drops of blood from the blade and resheathed it silently. At first, it felt only like a cool breeze had passed just beneath her ears then a tickle in her throat, like the start of a cold. Then she was dizzy, and the room spun around her until she was staring up at what looked like her own clothes still on her body, jeans and a lime-green T-shirt. A fountain of red pulsed from her empty neck. Then her body collapsed, and her eyes went dark.